And we have jumped you inside the Home Depot Center where the pitch that is normally grass for soccer has been covered with dirt for Freestyle Moto X 16. 2004 gold medalist still to come in a later heat. Heats of four, a new style of doing this. And there, Adam Jones, your 2007 winner. So a lot of big hitters still to come. Eight will transfer on. And this is how the first eight that have run sit right now with eight more riders to go. It will be a heck of a shootout. I'll tell you, this course is huge. Lots of options. And speaking of options, BMX Park has tons of them. I love the style over there. Let's go back to Jimmy Coleman and the boys. Dogs in the house. 16 total riders fighting for eight spots. That's how they stand right now. Coming out of the gate, has to be one of the favorites. Last year's silver medalist. You got to love it that he's racing the course. A different format this year. You will be rewarded for getting on your gas when it's time to go for tricks. And Matt Rabot is doing that right now, Tess. Well, this is run two of three for Matt Rabot. They're only 60 second runs, and these guys are normally used to 90 second runs, and that's a big difference, but he's using a unique line now. He didn't use this line in his last run. He did score 40 in the last run. Remember, the best two of three of what counts of 40 is a big score. He needs to at least equal that. He really wants to try and dominate right out of the, you know, out of the chute. For those of you not familiar with freestyle motocross, the riders, 16 of them, riding approximately 230-pound motorcycles. There's a number of ramps, all different lengths, everything from 45 feet to 115 feet. They invert, they twist, they take body parts off, basically risk as much as you can and have as clean of a takeoff and landing to get the best score oh. possible. And that is what you call a very clean underflip to a semi-sketchy landing, dabbing a foot. Five judges will be scoring it. The best possible score on each run is 50, 5-0. Five well, that sketchy landing is, it's caused by the floor here in Home Depot just gets baked by the sun and unfortunately gets a little bit dusty and slick. But take a look at how good that underflip is. The bike perpendicular to the direction of travel. Oh, lucky to save that one. Just kind of bounced a bit there, and he does have the equal highest score so far in this round number one of 40. Backs it up with the 39. Your top two of three will count, and Rabot is now on your top spot. Now we're taking a look at Todd Potter, who has been in two competitions already at X Games and has medaled in both, beating James Stewart and Ricky Carmichael in the best whip competition for gold. Yes, Potter, oh, nice. oh, big extension. That's not a really big jump to throw that big of a trick, and he held it a long time. Well, here he should be going for the really big jump. The 115, it's actually about 130 feet door to door. His other medal, just last night, the bronze in the best trick competition where we saw lots of riders crashing. Todd is quickly becoming one of the it guys in freestyle motocross. Here's the thing about Todd Potter. He certainly was a bit of a, a maybe a misguided youth. A head case. And I actually talked to him today. He's just missing there. He was going for the cliffhanger flip. He didn't quite get the hands all the way off. But now he's living cleaner. He's really focused. He seems like he's actually having fun on his dirt bike again. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is one of the best natural riders out there in the freestyle world. Todd will appreciate you saying that about him. Well, you know, give credit where credit's due. I think he's going to get this one. He made the turn, and this is the approach before the red flags flew. So this should be the last flip trick. Nice one for Todd Potter. One-handed can-can flip. If you haven't seen a lot of freestyle motocross, watch careful because they do a lot really fast. Look at the extension. Oh. He is. That is some of the most amazing extension. He is a strong person to be able to pull that back. I, that may be the biggest I've ever seen that and extended. What what was crazy there is how stalled out he was on the way back. I just mentioned the fact that he already has one gold and one bronze. He wants to be in that top eight to move through to what will be the equivalent of a semifinal head-to-head -head competitions. This is a new format. I call it the jam format, kind of like what you're seeing in BMX Park. Four riders, all riding, 60-second runs, three different runs, your best two count but they're not riding head to head right now. It's the overall top eight that will transfer. And this guy right here, I really I really like his style and ability. Mike Mason is always in the mix. Oh, that was nice. Coming up a little bit short though for Mason, the, 
there's a, ch it's a challenging course. I mean, there's lots of different lines you have to take, and typically on a freestyle course, you plan your run a long time in advance, and you tend to take the same line through the course. You learn the course, but they have to do unique lines every time they go out because that's one of the things that judges are looking for. So Mason just turning 27 years old. He's a bronze medalist in freestyle from 2006 and 2008. So consistency, he's not afraid to give. He's definitely got the skill. One of the riders to watch in the competition. And when he is on, he is one of the more perfect and fun riders to watch because of his style. He has a lot of style. Well, we'll have to see if the judges will count that. The turn that he made, the red flag was up. He kind of wasn't under power going towards the jump. That is one of the stipulations from uh, Regis Harrington, our head judge. Be under power on the way to a ramp, and that will count. So let's see if Mason can get another good score. Got 38 in his first run. But the big scores are stacking up here. Looking back, Mace going Indian air, crossing the legs, like when you sit Indian style, so to speak, when you're a kid. Crossing the legs while he's upside down and getting back on the bike. So great performance there from Mason and doing himself good in the scores. So for now, that's it here from Freestyle Moto X. We will be back soon, but now let's go over to Jimmy Coleman. Thank you, Jimmy. I love what you guys got going on over there. I love the park. I love the concrete. I love the style. And you know, BMX is where a lot of the tricks in Freestyle Motocross originally came from. Of course, the freestyle guys sometimes adding something a little different, some of these grab combinations, and the judges have been saying test, do it right side up well and upside down well. In the past year, we've seen lots of upside down, but I think we're seeing a good mixture here at X Games 15. Well, there, McNeil is showing you a great right side up trick there with that ruler. But the judges are saying if you do a weak upside down trick, that really is going to knock you, even though it's a backflip and you think it's a dangerous trick to do, they want perfection from these riders. McNeil making a mistake there, coming uh -oh. out of the corner and... Uh, Giving up. Yeah. You guys need to know this. Jim McNeil got in as an alternate because one of the heroes of freestyle motocross took a huge digger. Robbie Madison, Maddo, our New Year's Eve mad dog, as you might say. And we, and we have to give another shout out to the guy who was the first alternate, Cameron Sinclair, also an Australian. He was sitting in that first alternate position a couple of weeks ago in Madrid, Spain. He actually crashed doing a double backflip, of which he had done 26 previously. So uh, Cam is doing well and wish him a speedy recovery. But Jim McNeil is going to have to leave it all. Well, He's going to have to bring the heat uh, no. a little better than that, I'll tell you. There's his final score. It's not going to be enough. Be a factor. He's not even in the top eight now. And there's still another group of four riders to go. This man right here, he is your overall leader with a combined score of 79. He's looking to better a 39, which is his low score. The best possible is a 50, 5-0. Five, Five judges watching. And Matt Rabot, when you talk about international competitors, no international rider has ever won freestyle moto, the freestyle moto pump. He was a silver medalist last year. He's the closest anybody has ever been. And that seems like a surprise to me. The, you know, the international guys really came big on the scene a few years ago. Before that, it was very much in American sports. Not so anymore. And you look at the number of international guys in this field. And that huge look through Kiss of Death that Rabo does on the 115. And Rabo, solid. You can see the top right of your screen in the yellow box. That is his run time. Each rider with 60 seconds. Prior to that 60, here's a little bit of a different oh, line. Yeah. Oh, that's a great line for Rabo. The judges are giving more points for originality on the course, and I thought that was a great line that Rabo used. He's one of the only riders using this, a one-handed takeoff going to seat grab. A little bit hard on the landing there, but not because he's long or short, it's just a, it's a hard landing. What was nice there, when he before he went into that, he actually held his hand up as he was going around the corner to let the judges understand what he was up to. I don't think this is actually gonna count. When he came into that new line and then he backflipped, you know, he didn't get much off the bike there because I think he had a, a bit of a rough transition into that takeoff. So 
the risk didn't really pay off there for Rabot. So Rabot, a solid run. He wanted a better, a 39. There you see Jeremy Stenberg twitch doing some stretching exercises. Next to him, Nate Adams. Those guys are good buddies. And uh, they will be in our final heat of four. Now Todd Potter looking to better at 34. He has two of those. Right now he's sitting in the fourth position. It's a great place to be. And Potter waving, <laughs> waving to the crowd. <laughs> it. He, you know, when he's having fun, he is just a great rider. When he starts to get a little twisted, he's, he's not a great rider. He needs to mentally really be in his game, in that zone. Sometimes he falls out of it. Well, there, look, an example of Potter falling out of his zone. He got just a regular flip on the 115 there, didn't get any kind of trick. And as he came up to that dirt takeoff, he decided to pull out. So I think we'll get a little bit of showboating now from Potter, but this one is going to be his low score. What a huge whip, Todd Potter. Well, I'm not a mathematician, but he is sitting in fourth place right now. Mason's already above him in points, and Mason's the only guy left to go in this heat. So Todd is locked into the next round of semifinals. Even if he loses to the four guys in the next heat, he's, he's in, doesn't matter. So Potter is in the game and putting in a lame run that time, just call it what it is. But two good runs with scores of 34. Whoa! We'll have him transferring. And we'll wait for this score. It's a precursor to nothing. It's not gonna do anything for him. But he's still saluting the crowd at 19. Not good for Potter. But hey, he'll be back. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. New Goodyear Fuel Max tires help you get there on less gas, people. This is a good thing. If you can conserve fuel, we can help do so many great things. You gotta love it. And the next rider will be the last rider in this heat of four riders, but we have four more riders coming immediately following. And this is Mike Mason, Carson City, Nevada, part of the NBHC, Nevada Hardcore, right? That's their group. Nevada Hardcore, the 775 group. Let's see if Mason can really just step it up a little bit in this I run. I like that underflip there. And it's funny how many of the guys actually now have that underflip in the arsenal of tricks. And they're kind of quietly bringing it in. It's not like they're beating their chest, but it really is a great trick. Huge. That's uh, He was looking for that in his last run, but he just held on and did the big Superman. That let go is so scary. Frightening. And, uh... Watching Mason, you can see the dirt is very hard. There's not a lot of grip out there. And solid tricks, though. Everything's solid so far for Mace. But as we said, Mason is number two right now with a 38 and a 34. Looking to better at 34. He's virtually in. It's the next round of guys that's really important for them to put in great performances. So right now, Mason getting kind of a free look at the course, but putting down a great run. Ah, it may be a free look, but he's doing really well. So Mason calling it. That will end run three for all four riders in what we are calling the third heat. One more heat of four in Freestyle Moto X. And we're going to check out how they're stacking up. The man on the virtual bubble is Thomas Pagez in eighth. Very scary place to be setting. Don't want to be there. And right now, let's go back over to Jimmy and see what's happening in the park. Well, it's heating up big over here, Cam, in the park final. And there you have it, the floor of the Home Depot Center. Nate Adams is getting into his first run there. The top eight that would transfer, as it stands right now, Thomas, Thomas Pagez from France, the man on the bubble. The NASCAR Sprint Cup Series rolls on at Pocono, presented by Old Spice. Can three-time cup champion Jimmy Johnson capture his fourth win of the season? I think so, people, but gonna have to beat everybody else to do it. Coverage begins on ESPN Sunday with NASCAR countdown, 1 Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific. Let's get back to freestyle motocross because that's what I'm ready to talk about, people.
And we've got some big scores coming in from this, the fourth and final group of four. Adam Jones, highest score in elimination from run number one, a 43. Let's take a look, because Jones has three freestyle medals, one gold, one silver, and one bronze, and he knows how to get it done. Adam Jones really is a great rider when he can put the whole thing together. He's almost unstoppable. I say almost because we just saw such an amazing run from Nate Adams, who has now moved up to have the highest single score. He's got a 44 he, versus the 43. He had to really Jones. slow that flip down right there. There was, a, there was a lot going on in that flip. I think he got too much of it, then he couldn't do a trick, and he still over-rotated it a bit. Yeah, and you see it looked like it hurt his hands. He was shaking his hands there, so... And this then to re-rack that corner. Yeah, this is going to be a, a, a low score for Adam Jones, but it gives him a little bit of a chance to kind of test out the course, a little extra practice time here, because he will have one more run left. It's the best two out of three runs. So this is just practice time for Adam Jones. And low I be corrected, Nate Adams has a 44 on his first run. So uh, Nate Adams with the biggest score thus far. This is a big hitter's field right here. Heat number four, the final grouping. Eight will advance. You just watch Adam Jones, who does have an X Games gold. And again, not getting a trick. He's doing a backflip. No, he's but not practicing very now. He's, he's practicing. Just, he's feeling this course out. Remember, one of the challenges here in this course right now is that it's very, very loose in and out at each end. So that's tough. Trying to get that traction on your motorcycle, it's very important when you're trying to fly over 70, 80 feet. And some of the riders riding the tricks on their handlebars. And Bilko, all the way from Australia, mate. Blake Williams, silver medalist last night in the best trick combination. Check out the 360s. He's not kidding around there, a sidewinder. Or Fred Flintstone, as Travis Pastrana originally dubbed it. For some reason, we don't use that term a lot. Well, we said that Travis really should get the name call because he did it first, although we know that uh, it was done a lot by Clifford Adaptante, who then claimed it as the sidewinder. So. We're OG, though. We're calling it the Fred Flintstone. Another great run started off here for Blake Williams. Oh! Uh -oh. You don't want to miss your jumps, and that's the thing. We have multiple ramp to ramp, ramp to dirt, ramp to dirt, in a train, so to speak, a two-pack of jumps. Williams gets the first set, but not the second, which will hurt him in his overall score. Big combo on the 150-foot. You remember Williams had a 42 in his first run. It's a combination of your best two runs, best possible score of 50, and we will wrap up VMX Park in just a little bit where we will have a new X Games winner. Last year's X Games winner, Daniel Dare, is going out. And there's the 360. Oh, yeah. I still think that's the toughest trick in freestyle motocross because of the way you change the access of the motorcycle. Well, you do, and plus, you know, again, it's the, the contact patch between landing and crashing is so small. You can easily make a mistake on a 360. Just look at this. And it's flat, so flat. Too. So great. Bilko riding, just coming back not long ago from an injury, was kind of hanging out in Australia, not letting everybody see what he had. But he's That's got the nice. 360. Butter, his last score. Well, yeah. they, there you see the mistakes he made. The All last right, time he put in like a whole bunch way. of 360 combos, like the heel clicker. So he rides that 360 like he could do it all day, every day. But with those combos, here comes Twitch, Jeremy Stenberg. Pretty much the leader now of the, the group of riders known as the Metal Militia. All these guys riding in memory of last year's X Games gold medalist, Jeremy Lusk, who passed away this year. We'll have a tribute later on that we'll see on ESPN tonight to Jeremy Lusk when we wrap up the Freestyle Moto X competition. But I know that Jeremy here would really like to do it in memory of his good friend and riding buddy. Has Jeremy's name tattooed to his neck. And a twitch, as they call him, name because he has Tourette syndrome and shakes his head, which he's never let hold him back, but that's where he got his nickname, Twitch. Yeah, it's in no way a handicap to him. It's just amazing the fact that you watch this guy, his head shaking all over the place. He gets on that bike and he is so totally focused. He is, so many times we've said this, but when it comes to the natural ability, Twitch is the guy. 
He is so much natural ability. Okay, another good backflip, no hander there for Jeremy Stenberg. A good run for Jeremy. More Stenberg in just a few, but Nate Adams still has the single highest score. Going huge and doing it big. More Freestyle Moto X as you see the Lazy Boy flip going down when we come back. And we are underway still with the preliminary run here at the Home Depot Center X Games 15 coming to you from Los Angeles. This is how the top eight are standing right now. Your number one qualifier, it's not quite over. Nate Adams holding that spot. And unfortunately for Taka Higashino, he just got bumped to the ninth position, which means he is not gonna make it through to the finals. Those eight are gonna make it to the final. We'll find out what order they're in as we still have a couple riders to go. There you have it, Jeremy Stenberg, AKA Twitch. Last year he broke his bike during the bronze medal matchup and ended up fourth. And what he's doing there is he's kind of visualizing what's to come on the course. He's looking at the course, getting it into his head. And right now on course, just getting a good 360. Blake Williams from Australia. Bilko, as they call him, silver medalist last night in the best trick competition here at X Games 15. Bilko, you know, is the only rider riding a four-stroke test. The only one with that four-stroke. It's a heavier bike because of that four-stroke motor. Also, the way that heavier motor kind of gyros around, it's harder to pull it around and manhandle it Don't tell, him that. It Don't tell him that when he's doing 360. Uh, the, the funniest backflip. thing is he doesn't seem to notice because he just pulls 360s like, you know, oh, hey, here's another 360. You know what's great about Bilko? He's just a nice guy, just, you know, super cool, got a good style. People just, he's friends with everyone. You gotta dig him, and he's not afraid to talk a little smack. Yesterday in the riders' meeting, he was talking a little smack. Wow, that was a huge flip in the air for Bilko. Coming around the corner, I'm not sure. Well, this one might actually count. The horn went off right at the end. He does the sidewinder or the running man, or oh, as we call, call it, it, the Fred Flintstone. You keep saying you're gonna call it the Fred Flintstone. And it's then the you call it the sidewinder. I like Sidewinder personally. So ends it out. We're the announcers. We with, a big, <laughs> with a big trick. So Blake Williams got a lot of 360s in there, but did he manage to pull? I didn't see that big uh, Indian Air 360 he did, the double can Indian Air from last night. Well, Bilko's looking to replace a 28, which was his second best score. And he does that. He ah, moves yeah. into your third qualifying position with a 36. And there you see it, the name Twitch. It's almost like a cartoon character, he's so animated. Jeremy Stenberg, watch him flow on his dirt bike. Oh, that was a nice start. That ramp is the toughest ramp on the course. It's been giving the guys a lot of problems. He gets the hand off there on the landing. The thing about Jeremy that I've watched is he's having trouble with his right side up tricks today. Oh, oh. a huge risk. You know, and that's kind of been the knock on Twitch over the last couple of years, and I've said it, he gives me a hard time for it. Not the best at his right side up tricks. You see him not getting a trick there, but the pressure's kind of off, Tess, because he already knows he's qualified. Yeah, he and does, he's not gonna be the top qualifier now that he's had a bunk trick in his run. The question, I mean, he took off. It looked like he had it fine. He had enough time to think and give that little uh, fist pump there in midair. So Jeremy's gonna have to be content with uh, being down in fourth right now, so that's a little bit strange that he gave up so easily, but. Well, he's gonna be fourth regardless because Nate Adams has now locked the number one qualifying position. Taking a look back, look wow. at the extension, not getting all of it, but that's 115 foot minimum, landing somewhere probably around 120 on that one. Oh, easily, that was big. He just, again, we're saying he didn't get all of it, just had to poke those legs out a little bit more. And let's go to the third member of our broadcast team at Freestyle Moto X. Let's go down to Aaron Bates. Well, guys, Nate Adams so far says that he's extremely happy with his eliminations run. But he did say, however, he was short on coming up, casing that one jump. But he said the conditions right now, a little bit windy, and the track is very serious as far as traction goes. You might notice a lot of blue groove. You're going to see some marbles over top of it, making these conditions extremely slippery. With the wind in the air, this is going to be a huge feat for all these riders to overcome. Thank you, Aaron. I, I really think the slippery course conditions are more of a problem than the wind, but Nate does not have to risk it. As we said, 
He is the number one qualifier. He has the highest individual run score of 44. So right now, just getting a free look at it. Tonight, we will have the finals of Freestyle Moto. And that's going to be quite a wild final because I don't think Nate has uncorked everything he has. And Matt Rabot, we're kind of forgetting him right now. He's sitting in second place, just one point behind Nate Adams. But there, when Nate came out in the second jump in that double double, you saw he pulled just a regular flip. I like and that, that line. Oh, wow, you landed That's low. what we call the OJ, or the over jump. Moto X Freestyle elimination going on. You're watching the last rider of 16 to take to the course. His name is Nate Adams, a former gold medalist in 2004, and we will be seeing him later. And we will be finishing it up tonight on ESPN Freestyle Moto X. I love it, the finals going big, a jam session. Two heats of four, the top two from each advance to a heat of four for the final. So Nate, just wrapping it up here, 60 seconds. Oh, and he's still, yeah. still, <laughs> still going. Some tricks. Oh, man. And this is how they will qualify as Nate throws another flip just for fun. It will be Nate Adams, known as the Destroyer. He will take the top spot. Then Rabo, William Stenberg Jones, Mason Torres, and Todd Potter looking for his third medal of the X Games. Let's go over to the final now of BMX Park and Jim Coleman and the boys throwing it down. Sal, a little bit of a shocker right now. Todd Potter just laid it down on the dirt. Not a crash, so to speak, off a jump. Just get on the brakes and making a turn. Tess just slides out, and we're uh, Underway in what is equivalent of semi-final. Number one, Todd going for the no-legger on the landing. Can't get it stopped. Yep, he oh. likes that final destination banner. Got all of it for sure. Well, you know, it's been really slick here all day. In fact, since we started practice, and everybody tells you that every one of those riders and Todd just proven it, but, uh, you know, a little pump for final destination there too, so that can't hurt. So they have three total runs. The top two will count. Best possible score is 100, combining 250 points. So each run, maximum points, 50. Right now, Potter has two runs in with a 54. Each rider gets three shots. This is Adam Jones from Minden, Nevada. This is his second run. In his first run, he was a 41, but you gotta be in the top two in this session to transfer on. And in the first runs, Stenberg and Adams both had better runs. Expecting a little more from Jones, but we did see a lot of his big tricks. Well, I don't know where Jones is going right now. He's wasting an awful lot of time. And it looks like he's decided this one's gonna be just a bit of a practice run because you can't waste that much time when you only have one minute on this huge course. Every second counts and you really need to charge. You can see he's just mailing kind of, it in now. Yeah, he's sizing let's up these talk jumps. Little, let's talk a little bit about it, okay? Freestyle Moto X, we started with 16. We had the same type of jam style format where four riders came out at a time. Each rider got 30 or 60 seconds three times. Right now, Adam Jones is wasting his second run, but he does have a first good run. And next up will be Stenberg and then Adams. So it's gonna be quite a challenge for Jones. Now the pressure is on him. In his third run, he has to really go for broke. Definitely, and for, uh, we saw Todd Potter take a big slide out. Aaron Bates is down below with an update for us about Todd. Well, guys, it takes blood, sweat, and tears if you want to compete in the final here tonight. You're taking a look at Todd Potter, who crashed during his elimination round and hit that banner. <laughs> Take a look at him right now. He looks like a joker, that's for sure. But these guys, they're tough as nails. Todd Potter is a bit of a joker, and I think it was Seth Enzel in one of the early Krusty videos, or if not the very first, said if there's no blood in the picture, it's just not any good, right? Uh, well, we got the blood there tonight, hopefully, we don't see any more of that stuff. We want to see the best possible freestyle flying action. And here is Mr. Jeremy Stanberg about to hit the 115 ramp with a huge backflip Superman seat grab. And all the boys, we talked about it. We saw the a bit of a memorial there for Jeremy Lusk earlier. Last year's gold medalist pass away this year and these guys are all riding with heavy hearts but you know what Jeremy wanted to be a rider they're out there doing what Jeremy would love to do and I know they're all doing it with a good conscience and trying to put in huge tricks and Stenberg you know with the 42 in his first run really needs to come out and stomp it to give himself a little bit of a cush Nate Adams has been in fuego nice 
Nice. Oh, that was Stanford. a great underflip. That's something a little bit newer to Stanberg, too, and I love the way he holds it and kind of stalls it while he's upside down. Well, this should be the last jump in his run. He's going for the no-handed flame. He was looking for that no-handed for a long time, so. He's looking for the no-handed lander, but decided against it. And the crowd likes it. Let's see if he can better that 42 of his first round. Like you say, it's very important to give him some cushion because Potter or Jones could pull out a great run. Then he's got a notepad there, he and his mechanic talking it over. Well, the confusion here is that you need to have a different run. You need to start in a different place. Well, 42 again. So the question is, is it going to be enough cushion knowing that Potter and Jones still have to come out for a third run? That is the question in this man right here, Nate Adams, a former gold medalist, as is Adam Jones. And Nate gets 60 seconds. Once they hit the jump, the 60 seconds starts. But here's the trick. Different than the years before where they could kind of ride around, warm the bikes up and stuff. They have to get right to within seven seconds or they start the clock for them. The clock definitely starts after seven seconds. There, Nate did this transfer into a feature called the Luskano. It's a volcano-shaped feature that Jeremy Lusk actually talked to our course designer, Dane Heron, about. Wow, big 360 knack. I don't think he got all the 360 there. It looked more like a backflip knack. It wasn't really twisty, but anyway, back to the back Luskano. To this, the feature he's heading for now. Jeremy Lusk actually gave the idea for this feature to our course designer. Of Dane Heron, who said, I have to build it into this year's course. And so far, it's been one of the most challenging parts of this course for every rider. So Jeremy's still with us for sure. And something you don't see a lot from Nate Adams not getting yeah. all of a the trick there, not getting all the extension. And something about that Lust Cano feature, the way they jump in, this is a different oh. line that we've only seen Nate Adams really using. So mixing it up a little bit, something different from every, every run is what they're looking for with the judges. Five judges are deciding who is gonna transfer on. They, you see that, that's the Luskano, that little line you see, he drops in, pops out and does the flip. It's very hard to do that because if you time the in wrong, there's absolutely no chance you can trick out of it. So Nate, from Arizona, Glendale, Arizona to be Specific, he now owns a house that was Brian Deegan's, and he has his own jump compound in the front yard. And Nate Adams is a bad man who brings in another great score. Yeah, I, a 44 for an 89 overall. I was surprised he got the 44 there because we saw you know, for Nate saw some I mean, weakness there. Yeah, there were definitely some weakness. So, you know, Nate, Nate is a great competitor. He he has to be the favorite in this competition. The use of course very key there. This is Potter's. Last shot, Potter has a 36 to 18, he needs the drop, but he would have to have an incredible score to make the 36 plus whatever he puts here, get him through. Top two advance out of this heat of semifinals. Four more riders to go in semi two. Oh, oh. <laughs> he might just do it. That can sway the judges a little bit. A bit of a rev there. Trying to bring the bike around, he's pumping it up. He needs to race his course a little bit and get some more time in the air. It seems like he's still kind of cruising and <laughs> showing why he is the gold medalist from the opening night here at X Games 15. Also collected a bronze last night at Best Trick. I think mathematically he needed an almost perfect score to advance and beat Stenberg or Adams score right now, so. He's got to put in a good run, but it's going to be, uh, I think, a I think it's, tall gonna, order. it's going to be very hard for Potter. One thing specifically, we saw Nate throwing 360s and other variations. We saw underflip from Stenberg. We didn't see either of that for Potter. And so that's something that's going to be hard for him to muster. Two medals at the X Games, I'm going to say, is about all he's going to take home because this score isn't going to put him in contention to transfer through unless. Once again, the judges and I totally disagree. You know, he did that big trick in best trick that wasn't counted because he ran into the barriers. He did the coffin where he banged his head on the back of the fender, so he should have pulled it here. So Potter with a total of 74. Jones, Adam Jones taking to the course. The NASCAR Sprint Cup Series rolls on at Pocono, presented by Old Spice. Points leader Tony Stewart, Jimmy Johnson, and Mark Martin.
Square off as the chase for the Sprint Cup heats up. Coverage begins on ESPN Sunday with NASCAR countdown at 1 Eastern, 10 Pacific. And oh, lots of difficulty there, lots of tricky business, but do the judges pay it off because there is so much movement going quick? Yeah, you, you see all these little like bouncing around there, the dead body, but he extends it and pokes his feet way, way in the air. So it's such a unique way to do that. They call him Gumby because he's so flexible and he really does do some good work with those bar tricks, Cameron. But like you say, the kind of tentative hand movements, and I don't know if the judges really appreciate it. It's just a little bit different than what we've seen from Adam Jones. You know, he has all these big tricks, like this Lazy Boy flip, oh. which he doesn't get all of, and he almost goes over the bars coming short. Yeah, he knew that coming I think, off. I think the difference, Adam Jones, this year, I just don't think he's getting all of the extension on those really key flip tricks. The Shaolin flip, the stripper flip. He's just not quite getting all of it, and I think maybe just a, a tinge off. So I, I'm saying Stenberg and Adams are safe here. I would be pretty confident in that, having watched That's a huge oh, trick. Oh, wow. That's a huge trick after time. That's the sort of trick you need to pull in your run. <laughs> well, so it's, it. it's a lock. We get the score for Jones, a 38. Potter and Jones will be heading to the showers. Stenberg and Adams with one more run. This is glory time for them, but you know what? This is a good time to practice, to take a look at the course. You have 60 seconds of really no pressure. Well, you saw Stenberg standing at the end of the run there with his mechanic clip, and what they were doing is looking at notes on where he should go to get unique lines. So Jeremy doesn't forget, because in a normal freestyle competition, it's 90 seconds worth of riding, hopefully crazy riding like that. And when you do 90 seconds, you tend to take the same line again and again with the same tricks. And a nice extension on the cliffhanger. Something you need to know about about Jeremy Stenberg. He's the only rider in the competition that was at the very first X Games, and he was just a young punk back in 1999 when we first came Freestyle Moto on the pier in San Francisco. So Stenberg has been doing it since day one. His Tourette syndrome, which makes him twitch his head, which gives him his nickname Twitch, was a big feature in USA Today at the time. It, it really was, and I remember actually having to almost drag Jeremy Stenberg to X Games that year. He, he kind of didn't want to do it, he was such a punk. But now he's here, he's at the top of his game, and one of the real heroes of the sport. And uh, I guess the new leader of the metal militia, now that uh, Brian, Brian Deegan's not really riding that much. Brian's not riding a lot of freestyle, so the general is kind of stepping back, but we will see Brian tomorrow in the Rally X racing. We did see him in step up, although it wasn't a great performance, but Twitch is the guy that's taking that torch and running with it. You know, Lusk would have been a guy that, that would have helped fill that space, but obviously with the passing of Lusk, a lot has been put on Stenberg for that crew. Nate, Nate comes out and wants to get that cliffhanger clip. And last run, he didn't get all of it. That run, he still didn't get all of it. Well, I think now he's got to try and size the thing up, see how it feels. You see, he's not pulling a trick there. And again, the concern... I mean, correct yourself. He's pulling a trick because he's doing a back. Flip. Well, it's a huge back flip, but in this day and age, strangely enough, 120 feet worth of backflip is almost seen as missing a trick because so many people can backflip the bike. What I'm saying, though, is that there's a challenge on this course because of the slick in-runs and out-runs, and a lot of the guys have voiced that, so they really have to size it up every time they go out. And he pulled from the best trick competition. It's not something he wanted to do. Wanted to just focus on freestyle, as did Stenberg. So both of them proving here in this first heat of freestyle semifinals. We're going to have more from the next round and see who's going to face off with Stenberg and Adams in the finals later tonight here on ESPN. These are the riders that are going to advance. Stenberg with a huge sea grab flip and Nate Adams when we come back more Freestyle Moto X. Much love, Sal, you gotta love it. What's going on right now is that we are taking a look high above the Home Depot Center. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. New Goodyear Fuel Max tires help you get there on less gas. And Sal, these guys are throwing down here at the showdown. And we have two riders into the finals, Nate Adams and Jeremy Stenberg. We are now 
in semi-final number two. Four riders. Oh, yes. And Danny Torres, who recently won the Red Bull X Fighters in Spain. Let me quantify, though. That is his. Uh oh, a uh -oh, little short there going into the Les Cano. That is his home country. And there is a lot of hype around him. He does get supercharged. Wait, I'm not done. Because he has had problems when he comes to the biggest stage in the United States. In the past. But now he's come here this week and he showed that he's been putting in the practice on these big courses. And even though he came up short into the Los Cano there, he really went for it on the way out and still managed to pull the cliffhanger to no-handed lander. So, you know, Danny Torres has really improved. And there are two qualifiers already in. Jeremy Twitch, Stenberg, Nate, the Destroyer Adams. Look at that. Stenberg claiming it. Check it out. The judges said, we don't want to see repeated runs, repeated tricks. We want to see it fresh. So they made these guys basically go to school. They're this carrying like study notebooks. Group. It, looks like they, it looks like they're in detention, really. I mean, so Torres. Yeah, much more likely to be detention than study group. That's is sure. receiving a 40. Yeah, not bad. That's what he had. Is, that was his biggest score in the elimination round. And Mike Mason, who has been the bronze medalist a couple of times, who has an immense amount of skill, beautiful hanging right side up tricks. Let's see if he stays right side up and hangs it out. No, oh. he inverts with the heart attack backflip. 110, 115 feet, sorry. So you gotta love it. Mason, big extension right side up. This heat will also see Bilko, Blake Williams, who's our silver medalist from Best Trick, and Matt Rameau. Well, the interesting thing, no international or non-US rider has ever won this, and Mason is Is that in the same thing, non- It's uh, a US and an international, well, is that the same? Americans are international too, so that's why I said non-US. Mason's in the round with the international, so all the furners are out there to try and take down Mike Mason. That was a good run that he put in. It's not over yet. Yellow flag is out. Here it comes. He was lined up for this jump, so this one will count. Nice. And the Oxecutioner, invented by Jeff Ox Cargola from San Clemente, who deserves a shout out because he was the first alternate not to make it into X Games. A great rider. Maybe we'll see him next year, but Mace, as they call him, straight out of Northern Nevada, the NVHC, Nevada Hardcore. As they say, Mason putting in a good run. Will it be enough to top Torres? I'm mm, gonna say maybe probably not, but maybe, you know, I'm, I'm kinda oh, in that funk, but close. my crystal ball was pretty warmed up with the judges there. And you know, the judges and I don't always get along test. But well, one of the things I like about in Torres' fact, run is the right side along. up tricks look pretty good. Thanks for the hug. Come on, Bill, oh, go here. Go. Oh, wow. that was the trick he earned. The silver medal and best trick, which you and I thought was enough for gold, the judges didn't. Bilko is the guy that I think, oh, wow. <laughs> How early is he extended? I mean, he doesn't wait till he's all the way upside down before he goes for the full extension. He is still in the beginning of the rotation. But that was on a dirt transfer takeoff, and that is a very, very hard ramp to work on. He goes for the heel clicker, 360. So already two 360s in this run. Oh, man. So Bilko doing work, and right now you can chat live with Motocross Supercross star and Best Whip Silver Medalist James Stewart at xgames.com. And James would have been doing more riding today, but he got injured in the Supermoto practice, I understand. So you're able to chat with him right now at xgames.com while Bilko is doing work. And the fender grab three, too many 360s and backflips maybe, Tess? Well, the judges said they were going to penalize people who would pull too many backflips, but 360s, I mean, listen to this crowd. It just electrifies them. Take a look at this trick. Hello! You know what I'm going to say, though? It wasn't oh. quite as extended as the one at Best Trick. It wasn't poked down. His legs were straight out, but you know, the one at Best Trick, he poked it straight down. It just accentuated it so nicely. Oh. Six. I, I think the judges ask. like yeah. it. So he beat Nate Adams. That's the highest single run score we've seen all day. And it's Bill because now this guy here, the Swiss the trick rider machine. Matt the trick machine. Oh, he's incredible. He could possibly take down Nate Adams tonight.
Well, so can Bilko. Here's the here's sometimes the only thing I would say about Rabot. He races the course so he gets more time on the jumps, but he's a little quick on his tricks sometimes. Well, you saw there when he went for that uh, looked like maybe a Shaolin or bar. He went really quick through the bar. Oh! Not too quick there though. No, that was great. That was beautiful. And you saw him flip the bar down. Most of the riders, in fact, all the riders, running. A bar they flip up to wedge their wrists under to get the motorcycle back around. So Rabo, great attitude, nice guy, silver medalist here in freestyle previously. Mixing it up, he has a lot of different style tricks he throws out, a lot of combo tricks, and sometimes it's hard for the judges, I think, to really see it all. Uh, he looks pretty comfortable so far. He really was concerned. Oh. oh, wow, I love that let go trick. He was really concerned about how slick the conditions were. I talked to him just over lunch today, and he said that's one of the things that really is playing on his mind. But it doesn't seem to be holding him back today. Good right side up, good upside down. We'll be waiting for the score. And more Moto X when we come back from break. This is what Rabo did and hung it out. Huge Indian and holding it. People, if you're scared, it's okay because we are too. More when we come back. Well, Bilko is back on the track. Blake Williams from Australia. He has put down the best individual 60 second run score thus far with the 46. And right now he's in the midst of a pretty good run. And I think we should check in with our own Aaron Bates to get a little bit more dirt on Bilko. Aaron, what's going on? Well, you guys, his confidence is soaring as he's fresh off a silver medal last night from Best Trick, but he said he got lost out there after his second run. He did mentally regroup, however. He pulled it together when the time counted, but he wouldn't spill the beans of what's in store if he makes it into tonight's final. I'm a little bit frightened because Bilko... <laughs> no kidding. If Bilko's holding back, I'm, I'm scared. Here's Bilko. Throwing the no-hander, then going to the knack-knack on the backflip. Huge combinations for Blake. And we'll wait. The score coming in for Bilko, 37. So a 37 and a 46. Not great, especially not with Matt Rabo taking to the course. And with all the ability Rabo has, this is his second of three. Two will count. Each rider has three 60-second runs. Well, Rabot looks smooth on his start. Mason had trouble in his second run, so he's really going to have to lay it down when he comes out for the third run. But Bilko had a few problems there. He tried to go into the Luscano. He came short as he went in. He came short on the landing out of that. And that's uh, you know, the tech piece that the judges are looking for, and they're going to really start to penalize these guys heavily now because it's so hard to decide between all these crazy tricks and great runs. And the track, let us not forget, there is a lot of real estate out there. There's a lot to work with. They want to see something different. Here he goes into the Les Cano. Backflip oh, coming nice. out. Very smooth. Now, Rabo is someone who's not afraid to hang it out just that little bit extra. Yes. Oh, oh yeah. Huge whip with the top sided can when I say top sided comes out the top side of the jump test. What do you think, is that enough to make him take the move past Williams? Well, here's the thing about Rabo is that he's very smooth, just like Nate. When he came into that Luscano, he was smoothly downsiding and came straight out, and he had enough to get the flip in there. Look at this. It's the pendulum flip, the can-can on one that, side. Yeah. The thing yeah. is, he doesn't fully extend it to both sides. Well, it's like you were saying before. Does he do things just too quickly? Is he too anxious? Danny Torres now, the Spaniard out on course. He's having a great X Games. He's had a, a challenge here in the past when he came, and the argument was maybe he's just not used to these big courses we have over here in the US of A. And he just won on what arguably is one of the smallest freestyle courses in Spain, right? Yeah, in Madrid, it's one big lump of dirt at the Red Bull X Fighters event with lots of ramps going to it. Here, it's a confusion of ramps. It's just insane when you look out here. You get lost, and he is not going to make this to tie. He missed that jump. I would say that was the undoing of Danny Torres and is going to prevent him from getting into the final. Quick going through there. I don't think he'll be able to get enough with that. 
Uh, and as of right now, he is the only rider in this competition who doesn't have any X Games hardware. And I hate to say that he's not going to be getting any anytime soon by passing by some jumps and cruising. Throwing the whip, I think it was a huge improvement on what we've seen from Danny, a rider who we know is capable of winning, but he just hasn't brought it to this stage. And he's been injured this year. I mean, he really did have some knee problems with his meniscus. So even coming back in Madrid, it was surprised he banged his knee up. But, you know, like you say, vast improvement coming in this year to X Games. We'll expect to see a lot more of Danny in the future. Look how smooth this guy is. I like Danny. I like that he is here. I like the field that we have. And I still like Mike Mason's chances of stepping this up. He needs to throw away a 16. But his best score is only a 39, which is going to make it very tough. But. Williams is still holding on to a 37, but his second score is the highest one we've seen so far at 46. Torres is officially eliminated from competition. A mic there going for the jackhammer. It's a cliffhanger where you hook the boots underneath the bars, you stretch the hands up, and they're way up in the air like that. Hanging up the jackhammer. I think he's having a couple of problems still here. That was interesting, though, a Shaolin right way up to a backflip Shaolin. Well, Mason's in great shape, but I'm going to ask you the question, Tess. They had to ride a session earlier, an elimination of three runs. Now they're running three runs again. I mean, this is something, you know, he needs a 44 in this run to be a part of this. Is it just a lot of runs in one day, and these guys really need to think about and restudy the way they bring their freestyle game here? Well, I think the challenges are, you know, very unique course. It's slick out there. It's incredibly slick. Plus, they're just getting confused because they've got to take different runs each time. And that's where I think a lot of the undoing has happened. But look at this holy grab. Look at the commitment. Oh. That trick was originated by Justin Homan, but he had a bungee cord hooked to his bar when he did it the first time. Yeah, it's a whole lot easier when you're attached to the bike. But I love the amount of flight time Mike Mason will take above the bike. 38. Oh, here we go. Mason is going, and I think he already knows it. He's headed for the showers. Mason is going to be eliminated from the comp with that 38 Rabo and Williams getting more time on the track as practice. Here is Blake Williams. And you know he was a little hot that he didn't take that gold medal in the, in the best trick competition test. Uh, he was, and, you know, we've all talked about it today. It was a great new innovative trick. And, just such a tough decision for those judges to make. But he is he's just pulling out all the stops tonight. He doesn't need to ride that hard because he's already securely in the final. But he just loves going that hard. Oh! And we should probably make note that only Nate Adams and Bilko will be doing 360s in the final unless Twitch as far as we know. As far as we know, right. Now, I know Twitch has been working on that over the last couple of years, but he has not brought it to the dirt. We know that his buddy Ronnie Feist has tried to put it to the dirt and had a couple of wads up on that. Oh, one hand and lander on the 360. Spice it up a little bit, Bilko. He's so comfortable with those 360s. It's amazing. It's one of the, the toughest tricks in freestyle by far and he just pulls them and throws little oh hey here's a little heel clicker i'll take my hand off <laughs> oh wow look at that like it's no big deal like it's nobody's business i would say bilko's got this 360 dialed in Forty thousand people making their way to x games today which is always awesome the fans have been amazing as have bilko adams and stenberg all proved it as well as Matt Rabot, who will be our final rider to come out here in the semifinals of Freestyle Moto X, but he's already in the final. Four riders are transferring. And a little under flip there. Major League Baseball continues on ESPN first. Sunday night baseball presented by Taco Bell features the Dodgers sporting the National League's best record. That's right from right here in LA, people, where I happen to live, as they take on the Braves at 8 Eastern. And on Monday night baseball presented by Holiday Inn, it's the Cubs and the Reds at 7 Eastern. Well, we're watching Matt Rabot here, who is really just 
riding a few of these hits for practice. He's timing it out because he knows he's in the finals. Here he tries that Lascano again. Look at how well he rides into that. Really very smooth. He and Adams definitely are the class of the field when it comes to the technical riding. And now the question is going to be how they fare against each other in that final. That's going to be quite a final coming up. Rabo, Bilko Williams, Stenberg, and Nate Adams, the clash of the Titans. And I really think Williams, with that high of a 46, I mean, we saw Jamie Bestwick throw down some monster scores on the BMX bird. I like to see someone come out with two huge runs like that. And of course, that's the end of Rabot's run. He's already in. The interesting part now for me is I want to step back, put my feet up and watch, see Bucky and PLG and the boys go crazy at Skate Vert. These are our four that will battle later, later tonight on ESPN. Williams, Rabot, Stenberg and Adams. That is your final. We'll re-rack them three runs each and see who does it. But right now, let's head back over to my good buddy, Sal. We are back at the Home Depot Center in Los Angeles, California, getting set for the Moto X Freestyle Final. Those are your four Mad Dogs, Adams, William Stenberg, Rabot, couple international riders. There are a couple guys from the United States. Sports Center is coming up next right after X Games 15 with all the day's sports news and highlights, plus extended coverage from here in Los Angeles. Then at 1 a.m. Eastern, 10 Pacific on ESPN2, it's X Center with a complete wrap up of all the action of what's been going down. And you are looking at Bilko, Lake Williams. I would say that he looks like the loosest competitor out there. He's having fun, feeling free, ready to do this thing. I'm willing to say that he is my pick at this point, Tess. Am yeah, I risking too much? No, I don't know if you are risking too much because he seems to be having fun. He didn't even seem that bummed out last night when he took the silver medal instead of what a lot of people thought would be the gold. But this guy, he's a perfectionist. He's Swiss after all. And he knows he has to throw down hard to take down Nate Adams. A little crossed up just coming in the drop in ramp. A couple good tricks to get it started. All the scores that we've had before are gone. Three fresh runs for each rider. The best two will count. Five judges scoring madness like that over 115 foot jump. Did, did you see on, on the way into that how his bike was actually moving sideways, squirreling around? Little bit of squirrely burden there. This is a really, really hard surface. And uh, it's hard to build traction. I know that that's been one of the things that riders have really been working on. Here's the line from the side over the Luscano and kind of crossing up there a little bit, putting a can can in, but not everything extension wise, but a solid run going for Rabo right now. Right side up tricks. The judges said at the beginning of the week, we're not going to see just an upside down flip fest. And one thing I do want to point out, Tess, I haven't seen the underflip yet from Rabo, which we know he has, and definitely no 360. Well, he may be saving that for his second run. Uh, this was a pretty lackluster performance for Matt Rabo. We know he can do better. We saw him on the double-double go long on the second lining I, quite a couple of times, so I he's got he, better. I think he even stopped before time was up, and there's the Indian kiss of death backflip over merely 115 foot jump and that's if you just hit the top of the deck which he, he actually did, did. <laughs> so waiting for the score actually we're not waiting for anything we're waiting for the silly announcer to say it's a 39 and now i have done that it now oh and more trouble dropping in wow. oh and it looks like he caught the headset now what happens here, because technically when he drops and hits the ground, he's supposed to have second ha sec seven seconds to hit the first ramp. He's well, going to come on. Don't be so hard on the guy. He, uh, he's I'm trying to drop the rules. in. The rules and, are. and he hits the official's headset. His time didn't start. We need a sandbag twitch like that. We need a new official with, uh, with a tighter headset, please. Okay. That's one, that's one way to get famous, Dave, right? Uh, it's not, it's not a good way to get famous, but he's certainly going to get a ribbon tonight from his friends. Here we go. <laughs> Big start for Jeremy Twitch Stanberg. So Stanberg getting it rolling, hopping into the 115-foot jump. Wow. Big extension. 
attention. Did you see how many flash bulbs went off in the Home Depot Center right there? I did, I did, I did. Riding in the memory of his good friend Jeremy Lusk, he has R.I.P. Lusk tattooed onto his militia tattoo on his neck. And there is his wife looking on, sitting there in the corner, Susan. Uh, he's looking much better than he did in the elimination rounds and in that semi-final round. So Twitch so far very clean. He's coming back into the double-double section. And that's a very, very difficult ramp. The first ramp there has been giving people all kinds of trouble. Two great flip tricks for Twitch. Does he have enough time to get it turned around? Yeah, he does. And this is where he was looking at in practice. Does he have something a little bit different? Nope. Yeah, oh, he's <laughs> looking for it and he found it. Without checking, <laughs> you see the general Deegan there, Potter, Haggy and the boys, all the all the militia crew cheering on. Support staff. Oh, that was nice. The look through. He actually was looking in the direction of travel where he was about to land. So he really got the extension there. And I think they all agree. What do you think? I think so. And it's already been an emotional week for all of the guys with a memory of Jeremy Lusk, but it would be an extra special night for Twitch if he could win for one of his best friends. Here, Bilko, the rider I said may take this thing. Oh. The trick that he did in best trick for silver, the 360 Indian Air. Is calling it the Flying Dutchman? Flying the Dutchman, trick, the that's flying the trick. Flying Dutchman, you saw it again, folks. Oh, I love how early he executes that no-hander. It seems like he's just gonna fall right off the bike. Did we mention Stenberg earned a 43 on his first of three? Well, that's a great score for Stenberg. So, starting it up big. And speaking of big, the float time that Bilko Williams had above his bike route there was just incredible. So he really needs to, you know, to put it down hard. He's trying to, to stamp his authority on this first run. So Nate Adams has to answer something. Nice. Big extension there for Bilko. Now, he was injured at the Mexico City. X Games and didn't ride for a long time and in fact recently has been in Australia. He likes that 75 foot ramp jump for the 360 by the way in case anybody's not paying attention. And again, I'm just really surprised at how well he executes every one of those 360s. It always looks like he's about to over-rotate him. He didn't get the no-hander there that Jeremy Stenberg did he's for trying the same to trick. Trying to punk Stenberg maybe, huh? Let's get down and uh, let's hear what Aaron Bates has for us. Aaron? Well guys, not only are all these riders very calculated they're very strategic as well you'll notice that all of them have a pen and paper and when they come back to get back on their bikes you'll notice they're scratching out tricks adding new tricks they're trying to put whatever they can in their repertoire of tricks to impress the judges here tonight's final and here is the entrepreneur uh -oh, 44, 44 for Bilko <laughs> there he is the entrepreneur he's got his own glove company deft family and he just says you know what, I'm freestyle. Oh, oh, that is, oh, the third rider that's had a problem in, with that drop in, with the wedge there. Is he holding that He's left holding arm? He's holding his side, and unlike Twitch, they're starting his time because he didn't have anything with the officials. He just straight fell down. Well, we saw, we saw the problem we, there is that there's a, there's a little hump there that There's a little wedge. That's where the riders jump in. They come around the turn there to get into that ramp when they're during their run. Wow, let's take a look. It. Let's have a look here. What's it? Coming down. That is the edge. Let's take a look at the replay. And he slides out. He gasses oh. it going down the face of the ramp and slides out. Aaron. Did you see that up close there? I definitely did. Yeah, but guys, well, as the temperature cools off, it's starting to get extremely slippery down here. You'll notice that the run into the ramp is blue grooved, and there's marbles all on top of it. So when they're coming down the run in, they're having a difficult time trying to grab traction. And a lot of these guys out here tonight have decided to go for a softer compound tire just in order to grab some additional traction to get over a 120-foot jump. I concur. And Aaron, I, I think that one thing we're really seeing here that we got to tell everybody is let's be aware you get three runs, but two count. This is going to be a throwaway for Nate, so the pressure's going to be on, right, Tess? Oh, this he's is got now. He's going to have to nail two of his runs because 
although he's putting in some big tricks here, the crash, the problem, the time wasted. There's the 360 heel click, but I'm going to say 360 heel click, not as nice as Goodfell. No, he's not really clicking that. They, he had to do the practice run here because he knows the time doesn't count. They're waving the red flags, trying to kick him off. They gave him an 18, and he's doing his own little takeover of the freestyle course right now. Uh, he's not going to be very happy. Aaron, of course, is so close to the action. She's like literally 10 feet away from where he managed to uh, what about this? smash the ground. What about this, Tess? He's strong mentally, Nate Adams. So that's not going to throw him out of his game. I don't think it will. Nate is the perfectionist. I mean, everybody said back in the day he used to ride like a robot. And if anybody can put it together for two perfect runs, it's going to be Nate Adams. But of course, River Bo's no slouch. Rabo scores at 39 on his first run. He's been a silver medalist here before. I like his kiss of death backflips. Not quite as extended as some of the other guys, but what is it that's not taking him to that next level of the score here? What does he need to do different that he didn't do in the first run? Well, I think he needs to extend. He needs to hold those tricks and, and keep them out there. I like the one-handed takeoffs, really cool. He's the only guy really taking that short kicker ramp and showing that he's using the course as differently and as varied as he possibly can. But, you know, he's, he's got to get his big tricks, hold them out there, show the judges what he's doing. Like, See, it's quick. I just don't think that works for him. I don't think that works for the judges. Yes, it's a pendulum, but I think it would be sicker if he just threw it to one side and just poked it way out. What, what do you think? Well, I think that's where you really get marked down because the judges are looking from one vantage point. They're not really watching all of these crazy replays and things that we get the luxury of. So you've got to accent everything you do. You know, I think that Rabot, in watching him, I think he was his sharpest earlier in the day. I just don't think this is quite as sharp as he was earlier. Well, you know, it's been a long day. It's been very hot out here. Matt Rabot, he's coming into that double-double. And again, he, he had to execute that quickly because it's such a short jump. But that look through, kiss of death flip, that is absolutely fantastic. And so the judges' point of view, this is what they're basically looking at right here. And he does improve his score of 40, but as you can see, Stenberg and Williams holding on to 43 and 44. So let's see what happens. Here comes Stenberg, 60 seconds, going for it. X Games 15 continues tomorrow on ABC at 3 Eastern, noon Pacific, rally car racing and skateboard park final. Lots of big action still to come. You gotta love the rally car. Let's not forget that Brian Deegan, who used to ride this event, is there. Travis Pastrano, who used to ride this event, is there. Not to mention Dave Mira and, of course, Ken Block. And it's amazing how well Deegan's doing in rally car. And there he is on the right-hand side of your screen. So taking on a new sport tomorrow, but tonight taking on this course. Jeremy Stenberg came out. We dogged him on his right side up tricks just a little earlier in the night, landing in side saddle. But the right side up tricks he's done so far in this run have been just incredibly well executed. Many, many years ago, I believe the first person to land side saddle. Oh, full great. Under flip. great under flip by Twitch. I was just saying, Jeff Tilton started that. Brian Deegan brought it back with harder execution tricks. Now you see Twitch going from the flip to the side saddle ladder, no handed back flip. The underflip was very solid, and I think you saw the nod of acceptance by Twitch there saying, yeah. I, I, I don't know if it was a nod of like, oh, I was going to land that no-handed. I definitely agree with you, Twitch, or uh, sorry, Twitch, Tess, that he was looking for that no-handed lander at the end of his run, but a great underflip for Twitch. I love that, and he next it up just a little bit. So very, very clean Ooh, ride for Jeremy Stanberg. Not that he uh. needs to be in the 40s if he wants to play ball here. What did we miss? Don't forget, Sports Center coming up next. They'll have all the goods, everything that happened in the day in sports. Of course, some of the action here from the X Games at X Center on a little bit later after that. Here comes Bilko starting it off with a no-handed backflip. Let's see if we get a 360, and we do. And he's up. And he didn't even let <laughs> the, the bike, bike stall. Yeah. He's had a problem actually starting that bike all week, so luckily he didn't let the bike stall. But this is now going to be his throwaway run, so this is an interesting dynamic. Indeed. Well, that's what you do in a throwaway run, by the way, folks. Yeah, you just do a backflip over 115-foot jump. It's no big deal. Yeah. 
and not risking it all by trying to extend the Lazy Boy flip, but I think he's just getting a feel of what the course will look like when he comes out for his third and final run. And of course, I was about to say he's gonna stick another 360 in here though, and there it you goes. See, you see Stedberg with his pencil and paper thinking about this. He's thinking, I got a 38 last time. I really need to step that up. But right now, Williams having a problem. Stenberg leading Rabot. Oh, oh, the trick. Uh, Ryan Dutchman. Yeah, and uh, I like the head accentuation as well. Let's take a look at what the problem was for Blake Williams. Bilko, a crash in his run. That is a problem. Let's take a look and see what happened. Well, as he comes over here, Pulls into that 360, gets the heel clicker. Oh, he hung his leg on the bike and then he decides to land in a double knack knack. Well, not really, wow. but that's what happened. You know, one time. Oh! Great style to keep it safe. Oh, look at how big that was. That was so is. That was epic. Nice. So epic. I landed on the side of my bike like that one time with both arms, you know, holding on and my legs on the other side. I broke my humerus. Bilko just kind of slides it out and gets a chuckle out of it. And keeps the bike going, which is amazing. So Nate Adams needs a clean run here. A little tentative on the no-handed backflip. Little squirrely into the 360, but gets the 360 knack-knack. He almost missed that ramp. I mean, I thought he was really gonna go right off the left-hand side of it, so pull it back together, Nate. Nice extension, but he needs to try to get this crowd back with him. The crowd has no bearing, but you know the judges get a little hyped up when the crowd's hyped up. A nice lazy boy flip. Travis Pastrana inventing that right side up at the X Games 11 years ago in 1999 when he won the first ever X Games. So there you saw the big Cordova flip out of the Luscano. He needs a big finish though. He doesn't get the heels clicked in that heel clicker. He gets the legs poked out. And he's got time still. And yes, this is gonna continue to count. This will be his last jump. Oh, Stripper air. Nice. I wanna point out, you said he didn't get the heel click all the way around. Right here on the 360. That jump just so happens to be right in front of the judges. That is the jump they see the best out of any jump. How about the stripper backflip? One leg through, one leg hook. Look at the poked out leg. Nice and, extension. And he's traveling, what, maybe 120, 125 feet. He's upside down, he's bringing things off, he's putting them back on. That's freestyle motocross, folks. Fact, beautiful, whoa. whoa, here we go. Wow, a 46 for Adams. Maybe the judges blinked when he didn't quite pull that heel clicker in front of them there. Maybe they just like the use of course too because he used the Luscano in and out. And he the also big does jump. that, that really cool short flip on the dirt, the right. dirt to dirt. Right, that's probably that, that dirt to dirt's probably only a 50 foot jump and he's still flipping it. Third and final runs are commencing here. Moto X Freestyle. Matt Rabot right now needs to better a 39. The 40, he is gonna keep the best two of three count. That was huge. I think he held that the longest that I've seen him hold it all day. That's just insane. He had all that hang time on that big 115, and that's when he can take a look and he's kinda almost comfortable looking upside down backwards through his bike at where he's gonna land. He looks like he's back racing around a little bit too. I think the last two runs had a little bit less of a luster to him, but there he goes, can-can backflip to one-handed landing. And he really holds that hand out. Again, like we said, you've got to really press your point to the judges, let them see what you're doing like that. He turned around and looked at the judges there too, which was even cooler. Let me ask you, does a one-handed lander, what's the risk factor? Well, it's a lot less risk than landing with no hands. But nice. if, you're, if you're squirrely, I mean, it can tear that bike, the bars right out of your hand. So I, I don't know if that's gonna be enough to really bump him up there that high. Right now he is sitting with the medal because of Nate Adams' first run low score. And here comes the one-hand, cheater one-hander almost. 
So, so he is only tied right now with Jeremy Stenberg. Stenberg tied for the lead <laughs> with Rabo now. Rabo. And that's Twitch's notebook laying on the ground. So Rabo with a good score of 41. Twitch has a 43 and a 38. He needs to get rid of the 38. He needs to get up into the 40s to secure a medal here on the evening. Oh, this is going to be big. Oh, wow. He went a little bit long, but he really did hold that as long as he needed to. You can see all of that crew from the militia on their feet. Nice Cordova oh, yeah. flip. Not poked through as far as some of the other riders, but a great Cordova flip nonetheless. And I love the way he did it. He actually like he brought his body around so fast with the bike. Nice Shaolin backflip, both feet through the bars with the legs spread while he's backflipping. Let's see some good upside down tricks. That's or good right side up tricks. I think that's something the judges are definitely looking for. No handed flip into a tentative extension there. Can he make the turn? Make the turn, Jeremy. Here we go. Time is running out now. He will he's get in. this. Let's see if he's trying something different. This is where he's been looking at the no-handed lander. Oh! Ooh. He definitely changed up the run. He did, and that was a really big trick to finish, too. That look through KOD. Again, trying to put the accent, the last thing he does, the last thing the judges remember is a big trick that's very important because he needs as many points as he can get perfectly executed. Very solid for Stenberg. I think he's going to better his 38, which will put him ahead of Rabot. Still has to wait to see what Williams and Adams will throw. Let's see what the judges think. Yeah. 43. So Stenberg equaling his best score. 86, your new leader. Ah. Now Williams and Adams, Williams has a 44, Adams has a 46 as their best score. He needs, he needs a 43 to win for Williams. So we know he's capable, he's already got a 44. Three sixty, the flying oh, Dutchman. Yeah. Got it. Here he comes. He's going across the Luscano. Big extension. Great extension. A little bit short on the landing. If I had to pick it apart just a little bit, Tess. Well, this is the time that you do have to pick it apart because Nate Adams still to ride, and they've both been in this pressure situation where they need to lay down the best possible run, the almost perfect run to get them as close to the maximum 50 points that they can. Here he comes into the big boy. Nice, and oh, yeah. a little bit of a look back, a little different like head look yeah. there, some little different style. You know, a lot of these Aussie riders, you know, Bilko and Matto, Cameron Sinclair, they got very unique styles that you don't see a lot of the US riders coming with. Click flip, not getting all the clicks. No, we dog Nate for it. Now we got a dog Bilko. Twitch. Now is this one gonna count? I think he was just through the corner. Three six back to one handed oh. lander. Oh. Twitch saluting there to him. They're good buddies. Bilko hangs with the boys there quite a bit. In fact, all these guys are all good friends. Nate Adams in the mix. And <laughs> ghost in the bike. with the ghost ride. <laughs> he won't be needing it anymore tonight. So we will wait for the score. Bilko with the silver medal in best trick. He needed a 43. And a 43 oh, he gets. It. He is the new leader. Wow. Maybe you were right, Cameron. Ozzy, Ozzy, Ozzy. So oy, oy. there's Twitch looking on. He's sitting in second place right now. Let's check in with Erin to see what she's got for us. Well, guys, Nate Adam is running on sheer adrenaline right now as he's about to go down this ramp for the final time this evening. He took a handlebar to the guts, and he said that he's in a lot of pain, but he's towering through it. He said that he knows what he needs to do to impress the judges. 41 points, it's a lot of pressure right now, but he said, most of all, he said he needs to make up for making an embarrassing moment on national TV.
He needs a 42 to take the win. He, oh, nice, lazy boy flip. Aaron and Tess, you both called your shot. You thought Nate Adams would be the guy. I said it would be Bilko. It's come to those two. Nate needs to throw down a solid run coming out of the Luscano no-handed backflip. I uh, pose a solid no-handed flip, and he really started that thing off in a unique way. He went over to that dirt takeoff. Here we go. He and does just the so you know, a 42 would make him a clean winner. A 41 would put him in a tie for the win, but he would win the tiebreaker. So uh, Nate needs a 41, and he's getting all of that. The tiebreaker is the best individual run score, which he has already. So far, solid. He's doing the right side up tricks now that the judges are looking for. Uh-oh. Oh. No trick. I mean, it was a whip, but no trick. Is that oh, a problem? man. No trick. Wow. And he looked over at the judges. He's made the turnaround. He's got that click flip he's been doing. I think the wheels fell off at the end there. I think it did. Bilko's claiming Bilko's it. Celebrate. Look at that. He is definitely claiming it. Let's take a look at what happened to Adams. It, it was in that double, double section. The second jump, no trick. We're being very critical here, people, but I think he could still get the score he needs to win. A 41 puts him in the win. And I think it's still possible. Uh, he had possible a great for run. Sure. But one no trick, does that take him out of that contention? I don't know. I mean, we saw other things. The judges definitely are. Oh, no, he's wow. out. Bilko, Blake Williams, You're your right. X Games champion. He is the first international rider to win X Games freestyle, and he just realized that he took it. Let's take a quick look at what happened to Nate Adams as he talks to Twitch. Oh, it almost came off the side of the ramp again. Oh, you could see that. He was just shaking and shimmying the whole way up there. He looked up at the judges. Oh, man, he knew it was over right there. Nate Adams, the bronze, the silver to Stenberg. And Bilko, Blake Williams, limps his way to the top. That's going to wrap it up here for us from X Games 15. Day three is complete. Join us tomorrow at 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific over on ABC for day four of X Games 15. Sports Center is coming up next. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in action sports. For more, log on to xgames.com for everything about X Games 15. Bilko, your Freestyle Moto X winner, Jamie Beswick in the ramp, and Pierre-Luc Gagnon, the boys doing it big at X Games 15.